My friends, welcome to this new channel. So this is my first experience on uh, YouTube. So let's start. I'm uh, Carlo, security professional uh, for the last 20 years, protecting uh, infrastructures on-prem, cloud, private cloud. So I am here to share my experience. I did uh, uh, post a lot on Medium, LinkedIn and all other platform. I decided uh, to move to YouTube and I will try to keep up the content. The target of this channel uh, is to be food for food on now the industry should challenge themselves and trying to do better. So I hope you'll enjoy the content. All content is available on SlideShare and uh, I will take care to update the content time to time and to release new content. So feel free to comment on the channel, propose what you want to discuss and uh, let's open a conversation. That's the target uh, of the entire channel. So uh, on top of the bar, you see the address where you can retrieve is on SlideShare, my SlideShare, Carlo Dapino. And uh, let's start presenting this topic that I think is quite actual and is about security integration and why the industry is struggling to keep up and uh, sometimes there are some misalignment is uh, even within the CISO. So let's start with uh, security integration. Why is security integration important? How do you integrate different security function? How do you maintain a security integration? How do you measure results? Is what we will discuss uh, into this content. Is a is releasing Creative Commons license, so you are free to share if you mention uh, the the author, so myself. So started to work in 2001. My area of expertise are designing, engineering, uh, operation. I did work also a lot on R&D. Uh, I'm actually a security, senior security architect, uh, but I did work on uh, blue teaming, uh, red team, and so I do have uh, an offensive and defensive view when I design a structure. So uh, I did work uh, uh, on the typical, started to work in 2001 uh, with the typical perimeter security and the move forward uh, till nowadays working on container security and all cloud challenges. So let's move forward. And first of all, what do you do you protect? So most of the industry are having different uh, need. Each is having a different uh, crown jewels. So intellectual property, personal identif identifiable information, payment. Where do you protect it? And how do you protect it? Are the other two main pillar on the conversation? But when do you think to be safe is the key one. Because if you don't measure what you protect, where and how, and when you really feel like you are secure, even if we all know that we will never be 100% secure, but at least having this parameter measurable and well-known is important. I see often in the industry, people talking about security, but not focus on what we are protecting. So uh, one of the main <laughs> issue that we see is the transformation of the industry from asset centric to data centric. So when you protect from a data breach, you want to avoid the data exfiltration. So you need to be aware which asset contain which data. That is mandatory to update uh, your strategy. So one of the problem is uh, the segmentation within silo uh, by silos within CISO. So we have the information security management, the security operation, the security architecture, and uh, the business with the board, the strategy, uh, the budget, what they define as a roadmap. We shouldn't forget that all these functions should be synced. And even if it sounds like a, a, an easy statement, it's not so easy. And I will show you why. So we are helping uh, uh, ourselves with standard, um, best practice, guidelines. But at the end, uh, we are like an orchestra. We need to be sure 
to we need to be sure to um, have everybody sync across the season and so the problem is you can take the best professional out there and wor let them work together but if they are not sync it's like an orchestra each instrument need to be tuned and the CISO is actually having that function to sync them all but there are some issues that are built in in the way how the CISO function is structured and I will touch upon that so we need uh, a balance between technology and professional uh, most of the time I hear especially in architecture a lot of discussion about product a lot of discussion without setting the requirement without uh, thinking that uh, is a strategy security is not just a product and it can be done just by one approach to that for example if you are working on avoiding data exfiltration your uh, your strategy should be across the data across the network and the media where you can exfiltrate the data but also uh, on how you track how you categorize and so as you see is everything about uh, a strategy not a product you can have uh, whatever product it will not fix uh, your problem in 360 degrees integration across the tools is another big issue because uh, everybody is in somehow looking for the best uh, technical product but they don't integrate quite well so especially right now that there are cut on budgets uh, and uh, whatever else uh, you see how integration is becoming the key point uh, on, on business so tools are mm, are a good way for an analyst uh, for uh, uh, whoever in the business uh, to to simplify their work it's good and it's the reason why everything is moving big data also security if you check uh, it's the trend is anyway that and everything is becoming sec devops and that means uh, integration by design so we need to spend a bit more time also on people uh, not just in, in technology we know how important security awareness it is and uh, how sometimes uh, uh, it's not just the awareness it's also our own people so getting uh, skills and uh, sometimes get confused also that to do security you need to study only security is not true security was never a, a designed to be an entry-level kind of job is supposed uh, everybody to have a knowledge of a technology and uh, be so knowledgeable about that to, to build on top of that a real expertise and secure it so we found a lot of security professionals that actually are not studying for example cloud uh, in the way it should if you check all pen testing uh, courses uh, are extremely focused uh, on the fundamental but are, are extremely important don't take me wrong but there are some sp specific in cloud that need to always be there and uh, forensics is most of the time I'll, I'll develop in the conversation and it's quite wrong because you can't be in an industry where every day there is a data breach and don't invest in forensics at all so DevSecOps should be actually the converged layer where all these topics get integrated uh, spend more time on people that will do that integration is key mandatory for that and uh, to make it you need a, a good environment a safe environment an environment that look after their own uh, employees and um, initiative like first first is the biggest uh, organization for incident response uh, created a standard called the ethical first and is looking after the the work-life balance of a security analyst uh, of entire CISO function uh, and somehow the ethics around it I think we as an industry we should stress more that we can't expect to perform well when uh, we don't invest uh, on the team also from their own career growth perspective so I see keep really good people and keep roles but don't move and after a while they get frustrated the the workload insecurity is high we all know that 
and so we we should look after the integration but not only uh, about the technology but also about the people that will integrate that internal threat is another big concern uh, job insecurity digital transformation are all anyway going to impact the internal threat risk so what is happening is uh, more than once we hear news about uh, hiring a doc on the, to exfiltrate data, uh, internal threat, but it's difficult. The internal threat framework uh, uh, to be established within a company is one of the most complicated things because uh, in the strategy integrates DLP, HR, uh, processes heavily, and all this has to be integrated too. So some uh, least privilege access is a good concept, but you can find internal threat that are having administrative access. So a rethinking around the integration and the automation to reduce the, um, the exposure and in somehow the internal threat uh, uh, opportunities is important. Obviously, you need to trust the people that you work with I'm not saying differently, but uh, we need, we are all uh, security professionals, so we need to think on all threat model on that side. So here I'm trying to show you how different uh, are the inputs across the function. So as you heard a few minutes ago, I was saying that uh, there are some, some sync within CISO function as well. And so working team and work in sync is mandatory and one of the reason of visa sync is also that each security professional see and use the completely different input you see how threat intelligence is based on information you see anomaly detection trying to combine input uh, having a big data approach. Threat modeling uh, is uh, extremely complicated because uh, most of the threat modeling, like the threat model, uh, is more uh, about the application, not really about the infrastructure. I will dedicate an entire uh, video about it. So I hope you'll find it interesting also that conversation in the future. Uh, new attack vectors uh, is always a continuous evolution of a threat and uh, every side of the CISO is in a way looking after a portion of that sometimes. Think about uh, uh, how the overall CISO function can change the perspective uh, of a topic. So we do help ourselves with framework. We have legal requirements. We have a guideline. Uh, we have pillar that obviously make that organization to work, to be well structured. We have a security model, a maturity model, uh, for example, is not mentioned there because I've, uh, I didn't write it, but there is also the SOC maturity model. Uh, there are cloud maturity model. Uh, and um, many other uh, option to try to understand uh, 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 how it's working and how mature is the organization. The problem is that the output of a CISO function is also completely different. Uh, who is evaluating a risk is going to update the risk registry. There is an audit and compliance reports. Uh, other are feeding and I hope in a dynamic manner a threat model uh, with feeds. Uh, there, are, there is documentation on high level design, vulnerability management report, incident reports, and all uh, is going to contribute uh, on the security roadmap. So let's be honest uh, the amount of output and the syntax of that output is completely different based on which uh, approach you and uh, which team of CISO you are. The risk should be connected to a threat. You will not expect to have uh, an evaluation of a risk without updating also the risk. And uh, vision is obviously a conversation that all risk professionals keep in mind all the day. So I'm not uh, judging and saying that one is not effective. I'm just saying that overall, the CISO function is having completely different input, a completely different output as well, and they produce 
documentation and process and actually the the reason why you have a process is to combine all this one so the typical orchestra conversation that uh, i had before but let's be honest it's not always so easy because we do find ourselves uh, with uh, GRC management that focus more on risk registry, audit and compliance, the leadership more focused on security roadmap, budget, prioritization uh, or, or from a business perspective, security operation, more on vulnerability management, incident reports, and the architecture is trying to keep up with the threat model, uh, look at the high level, trying to follow the infrastructure uh, roadmap, uh, but each output can be standalone, not always uh, get linked to each other. And that's create the first asymmetry. And so uh, let's take an example on how the threat is different than risk. So uh, if you drive a car, risk is to have a car accident. The threat can be uh, there's no uh, uh, lose control of a car uh, due to rain. Uh, there are tons of threats. And so even the remediation approach is completely different. Uh, not, not everything can be fixed uh, having winter tires. And so the same it's working in, in security. The concept of risk is actually grouping uh, a, 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 a topic in terms of, of what is the business impact of that, what is the risk for the company. Uh, it's also based on which business you are. Uh, it's based on the principle of the CS, uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. But let's be honest, we need to, to find a link between the threat and the risk because the threat continuously change. So it's the reason why threat modeling, the modern one, is more based on threat feed because uh, actually you, every time uh, change. But we can't even focus everything on a meter attack because uh, let's be honest, the technique are not always relevant. The meter attack is quite fragmented. You have the mobile, you have uh, the IoT, uh, you have uh, the cloud right now. And so combine them all in a big picture is not easy. And so if you see the, the challenge is clear to everybody, but the answer across the industry is not there yet in some more. And so we do see Visa Sync day by day when we read news about uh, incidents. And uh, I, I'm professional for the last 20 years. The last things that I would comment is somebody has a, a, a problem, but we, we always try to learn a lesson even if it's not coming from our own incident. And let's be honest, the industry need more black box thinking. So trying to understand what you can get out of somebody else's incident and understanding what you are missing within your organization. So the food for food for this slide is actually, the entire presentation is actually based on how do we fix this problem? and uh, how we can if continuously we have a completely different input, a completely different output async. So each uh, function is having a loop and it's based uh, on industry standard. Uh, here in the slide you see a vulnerability management life cycle. You have an input, you discover, you prioritize the, access, uh, the assets, uh, you assess, you report, you remediate, you verify, and here again, and in the reporting, you have the output that goes out. But le let's be honest, we need to, to sync it because if you have an incident, you want to, to be sure that uh, all C's of function are aware and the risk adjusted, the threat uh, uh, get updated. Uh, and so it, it, it's more complicated than what it looks on this statement. So I, I'm not agreed in graphics, but uh, what I'm trying to represent here is uh, each loop based on each function. And so, for example, vulnerability management was the one that we just zoom in. Let's see the incident management is following the detection, containment, uh, uh, post-incident preparation, uh, uh, and so on. The same uh, of this loop 
is for security architecture. You have uh, TOGAF uh, kind, uh, SecDevOps is actually based on the pipeline. GRC should be linked to all these functions because uh, let's be honest, if you don't patch, you have an issue and your risk need to be evaluated. And you, sh you shouldn't patch, uh, you should patch always, but you understood what I mean. Uh, you need to have a, a risk registry that is the actual picture at that time. It's true, you review the risk every six months, three months, depends on, on how you set it, but it has to be a continuous work. And it has to be a continuous work aligned with all function. And so if a risk get evaluated only link into a threat model similar to what trike threat modeling does is trying to link the two and each loop would have a threat model input that is actually the output of their own life cycle you'd be great because you'll see in one place the same uh, picture so let's see for example how the industry is trying to move in that direction because uh, think about the success of power bi uh, big data approach is actually having all data in a big data lake and trying to to get information out of it in terms of reporting but you can use it uh, also to evaluate uh, what is your threat model uh, how many cloud uh, multi-cloud solution are for example based on establishing coverage layer where you actually collect uh, all auditing information uh, across all uh, multi-cloud environment and uh, you centralize those and from that you see the security posture. So the, having this kind of sync is becoming way, way more easier, especially in cloud. But we need to get all Preciso silo a bit less silo and find a way to, to combine. It will happen, it will be natural, it will be an evolution, but it's a bit behind compared to the technology available. It's the same conversation with other things, for example, forensics. Let's be honest, forensics uh, uh, is becoming way, way easier right now in cloud because you can automate forensics. But you see all, a lot of people still thinking about the men in black coming with a, the suit and uh, doing the magic. It shouldn't be, it should be continuous forensics. There are uh, slot kit, volatility, a lot of tools that can automate and can be integrated in the pipeline. So we need to change uh, a bit the vision of the industry on that. So uh, put it at the center of a threat model or you can move it uh, change it to a sort of big uh, data approach where you define what is the metrics that you want. You can be a security posture. You can link uh, the risk to the security posture if you prefer. It depends on, on how is your organization. It depends on, on, on how is the structure. I did work uh, on high level uh, enterprise design uh, framework like TOGAF, SAPSA, where you even analyze the business function. But at the same time, I work uh, on engineering, and so zooming in on the solutioning. So I did see both sides, and they need to have a link. It's sometimes the problem of the industry is even with uh, a sync between the, the same function. And uh, uh, you see how, how different is the approach uh, when you are presenting uh, a problem to a board. It's still a security problem, but you need to translate in business impact. You need to translate a technical problem into a business problem and explain what's, what's the impact, what is happening. But it's also true that we need to consider that you never spend uh, to protect an asset that costs 10K, 15K. And most of the problem is here also quantify. So the main issue is security is seen as a cost and quantify is difficult, extremely difficult. Think about uh, intellectual properties. It's not always easy. There are some way to quantify things, but it's tricky. So centralize uh, the, the, um, not just the CIS. I started the security in 2001 when actually everybody was uh, uh, owning the security. 
most uh, uh, everybody was uh, so specialized in technology that security was part of their duty. It's a bit sad uh, after so many years to hear people, ah, but I'm not CISO. I'm not, uh, I'm, I don't do security. Let's be honest, the, uh, everybody da does security. Everybody is part of a security posture. Uh, security awareness is one of the main uh, uh, duty uh, for all, uh, all companies. So what we, are, we have to do is to be practical, not theoretical. And so we do see this one, especially in cloud. Uh, two big abstract conversation are not working. You need to be to stay stick to what is the practical side of that. You need to talk about lateral move. You need to have an understanding of how an attack is uh, perform, how it's changing the picture. Uh, let's think uh, all these uh, SD1. Uh, changes, the container security, there are tons of technology that change the way to see into problems. Uh, the concept of service mesh in security wasn't there before in infrastructure as a service, so you always had a sort of gateway. Still right now, it's unbelievable to not be so practical and don't base design on API gateway. Uh, why? Because uh, actually it should be the key is one of the main uh, attack vector API, but is having so much throughput, but most of the time doesn't get uh, even the monitor attention. And so an attacker know that poking an API is a bit more easier sometimes. So that's not right. We need to be practical. Um, I don't like uh, the, the I love the idea of threat modeling. I did work on that in various ways, and uh, we will discuss that in another uh, ad hoc video. But I don't like the fact that it's a static picture. Static picture is nice, but it's like an X-ray. You don't see how when it is when you move the bones. You need to think in threat model in uh, in a dynamic manner, not in a static. Automation. Uh, is obviously clear to everybody that is the future and we need to invest in that. But it's changing also the threat model itself. It's a attack and orchestrator means attack an entire infrastructure. And uh, most of the design is moving into a, an untrusted domain with uh, completely different trusted boundaries. Let's think uh, on what does it mean, for example, to have MPLS uh, over the one through an SD1. It's completely new things for infrastructure. It was always uh, at the bottom uh, in a trusted domain within the land. Uh, move uh, uh, all these in this way, it's changing. Having an orchestrator that is actually a SaaS service is changing. Uh, having problem uh, where uh, Cloud Shell you can't even have uh, a CASB in the middle because they, uh, most of the cloud service providers don't want nothing in the middle for obvious reason. But uh, you understand how difficult uh, is and all this automation. Uh, the fact that, okay, you can use Terraform, Playbook, and uh, whatever, but you see how it's changing the picture of some threat modeling. If you compromise that, you compromise the entire infrastructure in one shot. How many products? are not yet uh, supporting uh, rotation of tokens. Uh, you see playbook uh, in automation uh, with token, but it's disgrace. But uh, it's, it's actually a problem of the industry. We are, everybody is aware, everybody told that there is a problem, but not everybody is looking at the big picture. But it is within the organization, as I told you, the async between all function, but it's also within the automation. You are having a, a, a infra driving a change and security trying to keep up to that change instead of actually doing together. And the automation uh, and the attack surface is changing. Let's think uh, the API exposure on, onto a SaaS service is in a way most of the time is shared because the API gateway endpoint that you are going to contact is shared, is multi-tenant most of the time. 
all these kind of considerations are, are changing the picture. Uh, the fact that supply chain is becoming so easy and popular. So automation, yes, but it's not just an answer. It has to be part of a, a full reconsideration of infrastructure. Uh, so reduce your technology budget footprint, integrating multiple projects, reflecting the loop you design for your life cycle. API integration is helping. Means that we are in 2021 now. Everybody is looking for cloud migration. I witness uh, the first digital transformation pro project in uh, Europe uh, before SaaS focus, in later uh, uh, shift and lift kind of focus. Now container, uh, multi, multi cloud. We are going to scaling and scaling quite fast. But if you reduce the budget at the same time because uh, you went for a pay as you go model, it's going to create problem as well. So having full visibility, that could be, for example, through the API gateway that I'll talk about, it's key. It's vital. Also from an incident response perspective, because all these automation need to be visible. Uh, I think there is also an unfair way to, to deal with uh, security professionals, but no, I, I'm talking more about who doesn't consider themselves a security professional. Uh, with all these data center closing, a lot of monopoly in terms of cloud service provider, there are database admin that they would be the best one to work in security because they know the inside out of the technology. As an industry, there is a lot of push on uh, having the security guy to know Metasploit. No, security is to secure secure whatever you secure the the data the asset but you need to know the technology and so i struggle to see this uh, problem of not having professional because uh, if you don't let them to be part of a security because they contribute to the market for 10 years and they know the inside out let's be honest how many security professionals are studying the, uh, the, um, the Windows internals when actually there is people that is 15 years that is working on it. So we are pushing a lot of good security professional that are less, uh, uh, less part of, of, of the buzz world to move to, into researches to, to find their own niche, but we don't let uh, fresh blood to come with experience with the game before, just because they don't know Metasploit. And they would be the one, the best one to design stuff, because uh, n everything is evolving, but it's it was having a bit of history from where it was coming from. You Even if you have experience with mainframe, it could have been useful on thinking and so we need to open a bit of the industry uh, somehow hey, it, another problem that i see is quantify understand how the security posture is getting better a lot of investment but you need to have a kpi you need to have a return of investment you need to monitor how good you are and uh, Continuous compliance, continuous forensics, uh, continuous um, uh, improvement of a skill uh, of a security team, of the integration. That is the way to do it. It's not that automatically you do a stand up uh, call and you become agile and you have uh, uh, fixed the problem of the industry. You need to have and understanding what is your performance, how you are sure that you are getting better on securing, what is the parameter that you use to do that. Uh, some use a time uh, incident, closure time of the incident. It's not a big, great way. You get a bunch of uh, problem and you just close it. So what's the, uh, your, your stats are not real. And uh, let's be honest, we need to work more 
on having the big picture. I I got surprised uh, on, on how cloud is making that easier because uh, uh, let's think on how the integration uh, of orchestrator with a cloud uh, having also agent which kind of tel telemetry can give in real time but we need to understand what we see as the improvement and uh, test it over and over uh, there are I remember when uh, I started to work on web application firewall uh, to 2007 2008 so a lot of web application firewall needed the, the learning phase, uh, the pain to use it in a testing environment, be sure that we were not learning something wrong. But there was that idea of testing. Uh, you see also new newcomers in the market, um, Infection Monkey, for example, that is uh, adopting the chaos engineering into the testing of a security of environment. Those are good way of thinking. A-B testing is helping as well. So we need to, to try to, to keep going on thinking on how to test security as well. And test security is not only pen testing, it's not only red teaming. Because uh, lateral moves are complex, are really complex. And we need to be sure that uh, for example you can't work in the security of a container i don't think that there is a, a way to move to an infrastructure as a service instance we have this kind of vision in the industry to just analyze a chunk defined by a big category and nothing else the attacker can't care the attacker move wherever he can and uh, actually the new design in cloud we are moving from uh, in a, a double opting kind of, of design to way way more flat vpc to do, 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 tons of network just the five rules uh, on the vpc i mean and here we go that's need even more testing and testing is easier now and so not just automating the tools but also thinking the testing so I like uh, to think about uh, rugby uh, because uh, rugby is the only sport where everybody can have a completely different uh, shape. There is the big one, there is uh, the fastest, uh, everybody does work in team. So we can't expect uh, to hire all over the same people, grouping them together because they think alike, they use the same input, they do the same output and to be okay across the organization to send the message and change the security posture. We need a way, way more diversity. And diversity means uh, that at the time that um, everybody will have to learn. There is nobody that uh, will avoid that. It's 20 years that I study every night. And so it doesn't matter what is your field. You need to keep up. And uh, if you give up, you're out of the market. That's the truth. And if you want to protect something, you need to know how to get attacked. And even uh, continuously understand how change. And so you need the collaboration of everybody and you need diversity. Diversity in thinking, diversity on having people that disagree, people that uh, actually can add a completely different point of view, but people that is also coming from different background so i i'm a motorcyclist uh, i always uh, uh, laugh about uh, the fact that you are having a lot of engineering uh, designing uh, mechanical engineer designing chain uh, disc lock and later on arrives somebody completely from a completely different walk of life and just uh, doing pass it it's it, that is a good example you don't care what he studied uh, you care how he thinking and so we need to have more people from infra more people from uh, uh, all all walk of life with a better understanding think uh, on, on how technology and lateral move is is speeding up all this stuff and how you need the collaboration of everybody 
how storage uh, in cloud is changing. Uh, it's not just S3 bucket that is here and here so that is uh, 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 making the news. It's uh, about uh, all type of, of moving information. Think about uh, uh, how much you need uh, uh, analysts to have a completely different skills, not just the way how to query stuff. They need to understand how infra is. And that is a big, big challenge. And so diversity, it has to be uh, there. And you need diversity in every meaning, uh, also in terms of, of personal attitude. We are in the industry pushing out people that are shy. I spent something like five years to convince myself to be on this YouTube video because I never been r really keen to show myself uh, and presenting. At the end of the day, it's like to go to a conference. Why is a kind of conference is not a kind of YouTube? And so I changed my mind. But it's not easy for everybody. Everybody does have a completely different approach. We can't say that somebody is good in an industry where shy people that never show themselves is not considered because it is not mainstream. It's wrong. So we need to change also this approach. Uh, all these uh, focus on conference. You are cool if you did conference. Now you you have tons of conferences, but what's the quality of that? It's most of the time. So uh, reuse project automating. That's the key. Um, uh, absolutely. And uh, uh, reuse project. Reuse open source. Uh, trying to understand. Uh, about the problem, not about the tool. And uh, there are tons of uh, good initiative out there. There are tons of good repo on GitHub projects. Uh, you can find uh, project design across uh, production environments. And so you do have ultra maturity of some of the project. Pay attention what you do and what you run. Pay consider the, the the risk of that, but try to reuse. Don't reinvent the wheel. Trying to use standard uh, and, and product that are designing this stuff. So, at the end of the day, you should uh, you should um, consider that your risk registry should be sync with a threat model. The vulnerability management uh, should generate uh, and be aligned with uh, incident uh, lesson learned. Uh, architecture should consider all threats. CISO should be capable to be not just a vertical silo, but horizontal across all organization. So here I wrote uh, a bit of summary on what I think. So, you should define your risk based on your threat. So be threat centric. Trying to understand what you want to measure also is important. Evaluate the quality of your feeds. It's not just getting a lot of information that help you. You need to be sure what you are paying attention to. Uh, each security function need to follow a loop in a continuous evolution, but should be linked to a threat model. Uh, try to sync also the output, trying to find a common dictionary between the risk guy, the infra, the, the pen tester, because uh, you, we can move all, uh, all conversation just on risk acceptance uh, or, or risk outsourcing. Uh, we need to, to focus on which security control you could have and to have that vision, you need uh, a well-structured conversation. Keep your threat model uh, updated. Automate and reuse project that you can trust for their quality, that you can uh, be sure about. But orchestrate and try to integrate it. Work in integration. If I think something that is missed in security is the security integrator function. So there is no role that is just looking after the integration. Everybody bought tons of tools 
and it should be part also of a budget uh, saving trying to understand which tool integrated with what how we communicate how they actually contribute to the posture and trying to save money as well and trying to understand if it's still actual if you choose a product three years ago it could be that today is not up to the, for the challenge and so you need to understand also how the legacy will work the exit strategy everything has to be considered on the security posture because you can't in the meantime that you migrate to reduce your security posture as well so is the reason why I do actually like uh, uh, having talking with CISO about security strategy work on how you integrate the tools but especially understanding how you keep in check the security posture and let's be honest it's not that the security posture means that you are bulletproof but as everybody always told doing compliance is not doing security and exceed exceed on that space it's not so difficult how it looks you can have the due diligence to trying to understand how works everything in your engine all piston need to be sync if one piston goes out of sync the engine doesn't run CISO function should be the same well sync and align and uh, use use brainstorming is uh, smart teams um, put it as you want adapt it to your company culture that is important because you can't introduce something that is not okay with your company culture uh, I I do think that is also based on uh, your way to work if you are extremely serious is becoming difficult and I do understand it to establish a smart team across function but you need to make it in a, in a way that is more um, open to conversation to new ideas and balance in investment in technology and people in the meaning of looking for diversity continuously monitor and test your results and check if he's really delivering what you expected and uh, if you have any question just uh, drop a message I, I will do my best uh, to follow uh, the intent of this channel is seriously to create content uh, uh, that can help the industry uh, with a bit of food of, for thought in somehow so subscribe to the channel if you liked I really appreciate if you spent so much time uh, listening to all this video and uh, let's have an open conversation I will try to keep up and if you subscribe you'll know when uh, new content is out there I'm planning to have a new video on threat modeling pipeline uh, supply chain uh, attack and all other mm, conversation I'm also going to present some of the work that I already did in these slides on slide share I will always t take care to to give you some reference I will do also some video for a new professional uh, that want to get up to speed and uh, let's see let's open this conversation thanks for your time have a good one